This is Tall Tale TV, your podcast for sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Challenge by Z.F. Sigurdsson, edited by Angela C. Hebert. The Orc Burrow was built in the ruined remains of a temple, or church, or whatever the humans called it. The roof had collapsed in the distant past. The broken glass of the windows still cluttered the corners. The walls were shattered, and the benches used up for firewood. The remains were a remarkably hollow animal. A ribcage of wooden pillars still formed the long hall, with the ends still intact. The front door hung on rusted hinges. The rear wall of the church was now the front of the boss's shack. Above the door was the human's dead god with its arms pinned to a cross. Its head had been replaced with an ugly monster glyph years prior. The bell tower leaned precariously on its side. The bell remained, but it was now etched with strange and crude sigils. A single flickering light could be seen in the window of the tower. A pair of orcs approached the burrow. They climbed the steps and entered the doors hanging on their rusted hinges. A mob of their fellow clan brothers had followed them. The various huts and shacks that occupied the surrounding terrain had emptied to see what was about to happen. The thinner of the lead pair, Weir, grinned with his polished white, jagged fangs. His second, his thicker brother, Brick, followed closely behind. Weir looked up. The sky was dank and gray, as if the gods promised rain soon. A crow sat on top of the bell tower. It cried at Weir before flying off into the nearby trees. Weir knew. Today is the day I die. He grinned and marched into the ruined church, the realm of their boss, Boss Narok, Narok Silver Eyes, Narok the Crusher, Narok the Coward, thought Weir. Weir stood in the church's doorway. His clawed hand felt the warm grip of his blade. His blade was his only possession of note. Anything else would have been taken by the bosses. A four-foot-long blade of slightly curved and razor-sharp metal, strong and flexible, with an extended handle almost a foot and a half long. A bizarre blade for an orc. Weir made it work. Weir wore a vest of blue denim, salvaged from human leavings, and a pair of billowing red trousers tied with a belt. A dogskin draped across his shoulder. A single bone spike pierced through his pointed ear. He grinned, his black, watery eyes focused on the boss's hut. A warm glow danced between the ragged curtains of the doorway. He marched forward, brick at his side. His brother was thicker at the chest and shoulders than Weir, something he had been jealous of for a very long time. Brick was raw power. Weir was forced to be smarter. And because he was smarter, Weir and Brick had become the unspoken leaders of the runts, the young orcs who begged and died at the behest of the bosses and caps. They were a great team. Things needed to change, however. Some things needed to end. All things gotta end. The crowd gathered farther. Orcish faces occupied the spaces between the ribcages of the burrow. Runts and boys of all sizes watched. The caps, the minor mob leaders, stood a head or so above the rest. Everyone watched with quiet anticipation. Weir stood in the center of the former church, the stone floor polished smooth with generations of occupiers. It was cold beneath his bare feet. 
An ancient pale hound chained to the dais lifted up an ear. Its lazy, watery eye considered barking at the young orkling, but realized it was too much effort and went back to sleep. Weir inhaled, gathering as much air as he could muster. This was it. This was everything. He roared, My name is Weir, brother of Brick, runt boss of the Silvermutt clan. I have come to challenge Boss Narok Silver Eyes for the Silvermutt clan. There was a ripple of whispers throughout the audience. Orcs big and small looked at one another in amazement. Once the initial wave of murmurs hushed, every head turned towards Boss's hut. A single hooded figure could be seen in the dark tower overlooking the burrow. A slow beat of footfalls creaked on the floorboards of the dais. A huge shadow overwhelmed the low light within the hut. Boss Narok stepped out of his hut and onto the dais. At almost seven feet tall, he was the biggest monster in the clan, and therefore the leader. A walking mountain of green flesh. Arms like front loaders, legs like tree trunks, and a head built like a steel crate. The boss wore only a skirt of pale dogskins and the skull of a dog as his belt buckle. His wide chest was rippled like cables beneath pine green leather. On his shoulder was his beastly cleaver. Three feet of pure black steel with a silvery edge to match the boss's bizarrely colored bright silver eyes. The boss threw back his head in a booming, deep laugh. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> runt boss, who in the great green ever thought of something so fucking stupid? Laughter echoed through the crowd mostly half-hearted to appease the boss. None of the smallest runts, the majority of the clan, cracked even a smile. Boss Narok stepped down from the dais, still laughing. What kind of fucking whelp thinks he can challenge me? Get out of here, boy, before I smash your skull and use it for a piss pot. Weir chuckled. How can you use my skull for a piss pot when it's crushed to pieces? Step one, make him mad. Narok's silver eyes went wide. He bared his teeth in a vicious threat. Most of the clan observed complete silence. The dozens of runts cackled with roaring laughter. You little git, barked the boss. You are nothing. Who are you to challenge me? I am nothing, because this clan is nothing. We live in dirt and live off meager hunts. If I am nothing, it is because we have all become nothing. And a nothing can challenge the boss of nothing. Narok's patience ended. He roared. Death, Vav, Jaws. Three of the largest caps. Rip this shit apart. Three of the largest members of the clan rushed forward. A single clear tone echoed across the burrow. Crows scattered from the nearby trees. Everyone froze and looked up. The clan shaman, Old Mutt, stood at the top of the bell tower. He held a dog skull in his gnarled hand. His hooded cloak of dogskins shadowed his wrinkled green face. He struck it against the bell again. Another tone pierced the air. He cackled a single word. Dishonor. The meaning was simple. If Boss Narok dismissed the challenge and disrespected the corresponding traditions, the boss would be dishonored. 
Narok's silver eyes narrowed at the elder, then at Weir. His huge shoulders sank. He set the tip of the cleaver against the ground. Weir's entire body shook with a nervous anticipation. Step two. Compel the challenge to be accepted. Those were the two easy steps. Weir leaned to Brick. Ready? His brother sighed. Yeah, let's get this over with. I'd rather burn your corpse before it gets too dark out. Don't be so negative. It's unbecoming. Narok roared. Fine, fine. What's your issue, boy? You let this clan lie in rabble and dirt. You let us live in misery. I won't stand it. You bully and abuse this clan like a child's toy. I won't stand it. Weir raised his long blade at the monstrous boss. I will take this clan, and I will raise us to greatness. Weir had seen enough brothers killing each other. Enough pathetic hunts. Enough boys lying in the dirt, bleeding for daring to have a piece of food in sight of anyone else. Orcs were violent. Fighting is all any of us has. It did not have to be this way. We don't have to fight ourselves. We can conquer. We can loot. We can be great. As the old great hordes did. Step three, get support. Narok laughed. <laughs> That's it. Ha! And who supports this claim? Who supports this runt boss? Brick stepped forward, arms crossed. I do. A clan that does nothing is nothing. We are dirt. He pointed. We are dirt because of you. Brick crossed from one side of the dirty arena to the other, arms raised. Brothers, we cannot let this sad boss have us roll in the dirt and call it greatness. We must fight. We must hunt. I ask you, do you support my brood brother, Weir? The runts shrieked and cackled in agreement. Their thin and emaciated frames were visible proof of the vile bleakness of their existence. Other boys, the worst off, the ones with poor clothes and poorer meals, joined in the chorus of support. A clan was a pyramid. The weakest and most numerous runts and boys were at the bottom, the caps and bosses at the top. Only the fear of reprisal kept the order in place. Only fear against an unwinnable battle. Fear of the bosses. Shaman Oldmut rang the bell again as his agreement that the challenge was accepted and the support genuine. There was only one course of action for Boss Narok. Now comes the hard part, thought Weir. Step four. Fight. Boss Narok stepped off the dais. Fine. Let's get this over with. His heavy footfalls seemed to shake the wreckage of the church. He was twice the weight of Weir, and a full foot and a half taller. He dragged his cleaver against the ground, metal screeched against stone. This ain't gonna go well, whispered Brick. Real fucking encouraging, brother, said Weir. He shouldered off his vest and dogskins, letting the heavy fabric fall to the ground. He stretched the muscles across his chest and shoulders. He could do this. Maybe. Weir's blade was longer, and he was faster than Narok. It was his only hope. He held up his blade in both hands for a low guard, as to parry and counter quickly. Narok held up his cleaver in an offensive guard his stance wide and secure. He grinned. Wind blew across the burrow. 
Leaves tumbled across the dusty square in dancing spirals. The gray sky watched above. The gods would be silent on the proceedings. The gods had forgotten us a long time ago. Everything was silent. The entire clan watched. Narok burst from his position. Cleaver raised. He slammed it down at Weir's head. Weir parried it away and slid to the side. He jabbed at the boss's shoulder and was rewarded with an ear-piercing roar. Red-purple blood leaked down Narok's bicep. The boss wasn't expecting that. Narok turned to bring his cleaver down again. Weir slid back on his heels, trading his sword between hands. Narok was mad now. He had expected this fight to already be over. Weir grinned, just to annoy the boss. Narok roared and launched himself back at Weir, a mountain of flesh barreling right at the boy. Weir used his speed and size against the boss. He circled and weaved around the great monster. He caught the cleaver against his blade and guided it away. Each heavy clash sent vibrations up Weir's arm. He thrust quickly and retreated. He couldn't be greedy. He slid backwards again, leaving another two gashes on the boss's arms and shoulders. Strings of saliva hung from the boss's fangs. Tiny streams of red-purple ribbons rolled down his green skin. Weir's arms were shaking. He couldn't continue this for long. The boss was too strong, and Weir was already getting tired. Narok attacked again. Weir parried again, and he just slid backwards. He was cornered against one of the pillars of the church. An invitation. Narok barreled forward. Weir waited before the last second and dove to the side. Narok slammed into the pillar. The bricks shattered and tumbled over the boss. The boss growled before he could rise. Weir laughed. Is this your boss? Is this your leader? The one to lead us? Instead of attacking, as he probably should have, he raised his arms to the tribe. Is this what we are? Just mindless monsters attacking everything in sight? Is this all we are? Narok growled and got to his feet. Dust stuck to the bleeding wounds. Rubble rolled off his wide shoulders. Narok's silver eyes were tiny within his brow. He launched himself at Weir like a mad dog. Weir twisted around, barely in time. He didn't have the leverage to parry away the cleaver. It bit into his blade. Exactly what Weir was trying to avoid. Narok used his mass against Weir. The sheer force locked the blades together and Weir couldn't maneuver. He slid back on his heels. Narok grinned. Weak. The boss shoved with the force of a hurricane. Weir lost his footing and tumbled across the ground. Narok roared and smashed his blade downwards. Weir rolled away. The cleaver bit into the ground, sending chips of stone flying. Weir reached for his blade, his fingers almost grazing the handle. Narok slammed his leg into Weir's side. The boy tumbled across the burrow before slamming into a pillar. His chest seized. The boss laughed. Weir wiped the dust from his eyes. The boss loomed over the runtling, a hulking shadow against the gray sky. His chest heaved with each breath. He laughed. Pathetic runt. Weir gripped a handful of broken glass and dust. The boss reached to lift Weir by the throat. Weir slammed the fistful of glass into Narok's silver eyes. Narok roared, and his huge form stumbled back with earth-shaking footfalls. He clawed at his bleeding eyes. Weir used the opening. He spun on his arms and kicked out the boss's left leg. Narok yelled as he lost his balance and crashed to the ground. Top-heavy beast. 
Weir didn't waste time. He got to his feet and kicked the boss across the jaw. Pain spread up his shin. Weir grabbed his blade. Brothers, all of you, there is a human village ten miles to the north, just sitting there, sitting, fat and rich. We've spent all our lives scavenging off their leavings and biting at each other. I say we should storm those fucking humies and take what is ours. Murmurs rose throughout the entire tribe. They weighed the options. If they exposed the tribe to the humans, they could suffer horrible repercussions. They could be exterminated like rats. Weir raised his blade. We can either live like animals, or we can be conquerors. Stupid runt, growled a voice behind him. A force slammed into Weir's back and crashed with him onto the floor. The weight threatened to crush Weir's body. The boss lifted up Weir and slammed him against the ground. Something cracked. Weir gasped for air. He twisted in the boss's grip, managing to free one arm. He jabbed his clawed fingers into the boss's eye. Tears and blood streamed out of the boss's already very damaged sockets. The boss screamed. His grip squeezed harder, trying to crush Weir with sheer mass. Weir jerked his hand back. The boss shrieked and slammed Weir against the ground. Weir wheezed. Everything hurt. The boss stomped backwards, clutching his eyes as blood dripped down. Weir raised his hand. In his fingers, he held the dripping eyeball of Narok Silver Eyes. The runts and boys exploded into cheers and war cries. Several loyalists cried, Bad form! Bad form! Mediocre! Old Mutt nodded approval from the bell tower. It was a rude attack, but a runt fighting a boss? Tradition allowed such dirty tactics for such unequal fights. Weir slowly got to his feet, clutching his sides. He tossed the eyeball to the side. Brick rushed over to him with water. He splashed it across his face and down his throat. You've done it, said Brick. Almost. I need to end it. Boss Narok gasped and roared with pain. Blood seeped between his fingers, clutching his eye. A huge mountain of green killing machine on the verge of sobbing. Several loyalists came to the boss's aid with water and bandages. Narok roared and swatted them to the side. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you, runt boss. Weir shoved Brick to the side. He collected his blade, barely managing to lift it with one hand. His ribs throbbed with blinding pain. Weir wiped his face accidentally streaking Narok's blood across his mouth. His legs quaked. The loyalist brought Narok his cleaver, but he refused. I'll rip you limb from limb, whelp. The boss charged. Weir grit his teeth. His entire body seemed to shudder with pain. He held his position, adopting a straight back, one-handed stance. He'd seen pictures of humans in a stance like this. Fencing, they called it. Narok barreled towards Weir, crashing towards him like an avalanche. His remaining silver eye barely visible in his furious and bloodied scowl. A tiny silver dot of self-righteous anger. Weir exhaled. Now. With a single precise swipe, Weir slashed upwards and towards the left. Red-purple blood splattered across the church ground. Narok tumbled into a pillar. When the dust cleared, Narok was on his back, clutching his eye. He kicked and screamed like an overgrown human child. The entire tribe roared with either screams of dismay or cries of approval. Narok Silver Eyes 
had been reduced to Narok, no eyes. The great boss thrashed and kicked. Where are you? Where are you? I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you. He pawed like a clumsy bear searching for its prey. Where is he? Weir's whole body shuddered. I actually did it. The pain in his side redoubled. Weir fell to one knee. What's wrong with me? He'd broken ribs before, but never like this. His body still pumped with adrenaline. He used his blade to prop himself back to his feet. He forced a triumphant smile. Brothers, will we be animals or will we be conquerors? Weir's support burst into cheers. Now a large majority of the tribe agreed. They would no longer be those backwoods animals living off meager hunts and roots. They wouldn't bully and abuse each other. They would take what was theirs because it was theirs to take. Weir raised his blade. We will be like the great hordes of old. Roar! roared the Silvermutt clan. Weir looked to Brick, who had a neutral expression. No excitement, no pride. He had always been the quiet of the pair, but this was different. Brick? Weir's tongue felt dull and fuzzy in his mouth. Fool! Fool! Cursing fucking fool! Whimpered the defeated boss on the ground. Weir stepped over to him, blade ready to end this. The challenge would not end until one of them was dead. The boss still clutched his face, bloody tears running down his massive head. You fucking fool. You'll kill them all. No, Narok. I'm freeing them. You're dooming them. Attacking the Humies is suicide. Attack one, the rest of the fucking country hunts us down. We live when they ignore us. We live when we hide. He pulled back his massive hands to reveal the blinded and bloodied mess that had been his eyes. A deep hole and gashes where his silver eyes had been. We live when we are nothing. Living as nothing is not worth living. Narok growled. You fool. Dying is nothing. Living is something. You won't have that to worry about anymore. No. Weir raised his blade to pierce Narok's heart. Before he could bring it down, he felt his entire body seize. His back constricted like a metal cord. He gasped for air. He couldn't move. A hand grasped his ankle. The blind Narok grinned as blood streamed down his cheeks. Weir looked at Brick at the last second. Brick averted his eyes, his frown full of shame. Before Weir could do anything, Narok thrashed him against the ground like a ragdoll. Each crash sent new waves of throbbing pain through Weir's body. He stopped feeling anything after the third crash. His face smashed against the ground. He saw Brick turn away. Bones cracked and crunched against the ground. The crowd winced at each crash. It happened all so fast. Narok dropped Weir's broken body against the ground. Weir wheezed. He knew most of his ribs were broken, his cheek crushed, jaw dislocated, and his left arm broken in three places. His lower leg shattered where Narok had gripped him and slapped him against the ground. Blood gurgled from his cracked lips. 
he was only vaguely aware of his surroundings. The shrieking runts and boys completely shattered. Brick stood at the edge of the burrow, looking away. His frown deepened. Oldmutt had vanished from the top of the bell tower and returned to his lair. The boss rose unsteadily to his feet, bloodied tears dripping onto his heaving chest. He pressed his foot onto what he judged to be Weir's chest. Weir gasped for air as he felt the life leaking out of him. Narok looked down. Boy, you think I didn't know you'd be coming. You thought I didn't know. Weir wheezed. Didn't think I'd be that crafty, did you? Narok wiped the blood leaking down his face. Nah, I didn't. Fucking little monster. We knew what you were planning. We couldn't let you lead the clan to its death. Weir's eyes gazed up towards Brick. His brood brother vanished into the crowd. The sickening disgust in Weir's heart was beyond the pain of his body. He knew what had happened. The water. Weir spat a glob of blood. Curse you, brother. May the great green see you bleed. Fuck off, runt boss. Narok leaned in. Weir's ribcage crumpled under the boss's immense weight. With the challenge over, the burrow was silent. The entire clan stared, trying to figure out what had just happened. To them, Narok had won. Weir had just stopped moving and was shattered against the church ground. A trio of remaining loyalists rushed forward. One helped bind the boss's wounds. Another wrapped a strip of fabric across his eyes. Sitting on the church dais, Narok stroked his ancient hound's ears. Narok whispered to one of his aides, Kill Brick. One cap ran off. The rest of the tribe hadn't moved. Narok could feel their glares. He roared, All of you, fuck off! His ears twitched. Nobody had moved. I said, fuck off! Nothing happened. Do I have to smash you all? Can't you see I can murder you without even my eyes? Blind old boss can still murder you. He heard the voices of several runtlings. Is it true? What? Hissed Narok. There's a human village just sitting there. We could be more? We could fight? Narok laughed through the pain. If we attack there, then every goddamn Humi for a thousand miles will kill us all. That ain't a fight to be proud of. That ain't a fight we can win. We just die like rats. Don't you let that fucking runtling poison your mind. He died for us. He died to see us be more. Narok stood up. We can't be more. He waved his arms, unable to see where the runt voices were coming from. We'll just die, stupid runts. Can't you see that? His heart drummed in his chest. Voices and murmurs drifted across the tribe. Voices of revenge and confusion and martyrdom. Narok didn't like the sound of any of it. He roared, All of you are nothing. Come at me. I dare you. I'll rip you all apart before I let this clan march to suicide. Narok reached for one of his caps. Kill any of the ones loyal to that runtling. Kill them all. The cap grumbled. Narok pulled him close. What? We can't kill the entire clan. 
The cap shoved off Narok. How'd you ever know if I've killed the right ones? Narok's stomach dropped. The wind began to pick up. It smelled like rain. How'd you ever know if we ever listened to you again? Narok reached out. Listen, you stinking pigs. I am the boss. I am the one that keeps the humies from hunting us down like rats. I keep us alive. How are you supposed to do that anymore, Narok no eyes? When the rain hit, Narok couldn't hear anything either. Zachary F. Sigurdsson is a young Canadian writer from Winnipeg, Manitoba, with a honors BA in political studies. He has a deep passion for an increasing diverse range of literature, film, and music, but with a special attention held for genre storytelling. He has had one other story published by the Scarlet Leaf Review's September 2018 edition titled Treasure Hunt. He writes fantasy, science fiction, and horror stories, and attempts to blur the lines between genres. He is also heavily influenced by film noir, westerns, anime, and vintage science fiction. He is currently working on the first of his Veiled Saga manuscripts, set in an uncharacteristic fantasy world where modern social and technologic problems plague its characters. You can find him on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under ZF Sigurdsson for regular pop culture news, shared video essays, writing updates, and creative inspiration. He is currently building a website under the domain www.zfsigurdsson.com. And if you are in the market for an editor, you can find Angela C. Hebert at hebertediting.com and on social media. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. I definitely liked this one. I always get a kick when you get to see the other side of the fence with things like this. It's not often you get to have the perspective of what's considered the monsters of a genre. The one downside though is I no longer have a voice. <laughs> so I'm going to go have some nice herbal tea and I will see you all later. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.